I'm Dr. Kelly Casperson. I have no disclosures. Your high-functioning older sister breaks a hip, as one in six American women will. 30% will die and only half fully recover. But in 2025, a study showed women given a female dose of a safe, inexpensive drug were 50% less likely to need a cane or a walker six months after a hip fracture. Wouldn't you want her to have access to that amazing medication? That medication, testosterone, was first developed in 1935. 90 years later, your sister still can't get it. Thank you to the FDA, Dr. Marty McCary and Dr. Sarah Brenner, for allowing me to speak on behalf of the 108 million American women. I am a urologist, and I care for all genders. In my clinic, I prescribe testosterone, an FDA-approved, naturally occurring hormone, covered by insurance. But all of those prescriptions, they're for men. In fact, one in five men are diagnosed with hypogonadism, a condition where their bodies stop making enough testosterone. Nearly all women experience the same hormone decline when they live long enough. Men have more than a dozen FDA-approved formulations. But when a woman asks for the same hormone, I have to tell her, there's no FDA-approved dose for you. The FDA is failing women by denying access to a hormone their bodies naturally produce. The ovaries and the adrenals make testosterone. Testosterone's stereotype is that it's just for libido. It's a half-truth. It's a neurohormone, critical for mitochondria, nerve function, muscle, bone, and brain function. Libido improves because dopamine and blood flow in the brain improve. There's pictures of the brain lighting up some of your work. Thank you. <laughs> the FDA has rejected two attempts at female dose testosterone, not because the products didn't work, but because they cited insufficient safety data, a legacy of the WHI backlash. But testosterone has been used in women since the 1940s, and trans men receive 10 times the dose. What other drug do we have where we give people 10 times the dose for 50 years and publish it, and then we're still asking if it's safe. Meanwhile, male testosterone products were approved with just six months of safety data. That is not a lack of evidence. It's a regulatory and equity failure. With no FDA-approved product, insurance won't cover it. Women are forced to microdose male products, justify their prescriptions at the pharmacy, or pay cash for higher dose, less regulated pellets. Despite these barriers, as many women as men in America take testosterone. And I've seen what happens when they do. They start businesses. One said, my math is back. Another, the German I learned as a kid has come back. And my favorite, you know that scene from The Wizard of Oz where it goes from black and white to technicolor? That's my brain on testosterone. We can't dismiss this as a lifestyle drug for women who know the secret handshake. Dementia is the fifth leading cause of death in women. An autopsy study showed that higher brain testosterone correlated with less dementia. One in four midlife women in America are on antidepressants, despite the risk of bone loss and reduced libido. New data shows more women can come off their SSRIs by adding testosterone than by just using estrogen alone. Four countries, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and the UK, have government-approved female dose testosterone, but only for low sexual desire. That forces women to justify treatment based upon sexual function, an already stigmatized issue that insurance often doesn't cover. With this current FDA, America will do better. So here's what I'm asking. Fast track female dose testosterone under the new FDA commissioner's national priority voucher. It meets all four criteria. Clarify and simplify regulatory guidance so companies can make cost conscious medications based upon strong established safety data. Approve it for hypogonadism not low desire. 
Work with the DEA to declassify low-dose testosterone for women. The Olympic doping scandals of the 1980s shouldn't dictate hormone access in 2025. Testosterone is the most abundant gonadal hormone in the body, and women deserve access. The science is solid, and the need is undeniable. Picture 108 million women, energized, focused, and ambitious, not in spite of their age, but because they are supported through it. That's the country that we want our children to grow up in, and it's time for the FDA to act. Thank you.